is it just me or does it seem like people have become demanding and dare I say it a wee bit more feral when interacting with others as we emerge from the pandemic lockdown? Greetings, kindred time travelers, as we continue our journey to find and claim our own auras of mid-century magnificence. I'm Dr. Julianne McFan, and I'm your guide on this journey into the mid-century world to search for artifacts you can claim and bring back with you to the modern world. Today, we are going to look at an artifact from Marjorie Wilson's 1928 guidebook called Charm. As I was reading her book, a phrase jumped out at me that I want to share with you. She says, our influence is in direct proportion to our charm. This jumped out at me because it seems like my social media is filled with examples of people displaying anything but charming behavior. It seems like people have lost their interpersonal skills. In fact, it seems like every day people are trying to exert coercive power over others, turning a benign interaction into a difficult situation. The interesting thing, though, is that they are going about their desire to influence people the wrong way. As our mid-century mentor Marjorie Wilson tells us in her, in her book, using charm is a powerful tool for developing social capital and having genuine connections in all areas of our lives. Now, Ms. Wilson tells us that no one is completely without charm, nor is anyone really as charming as they can be. However, through attention and focus on cultivating charm through personal experiences, everyone can develop these personal qualities until they become like second nature to them. So even though we aren't aware of it, our lives are filled with a series of daily interactions that can be considered negotiations. And some of these negotiations are small, like ordering a donut and coffee from Krispy Kreme or Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks. From, but others are quite large, such as successfully getting your kids to the bus stop fully clothed and having everything they need for school that day. Our, our ability to successfully navigate these negotiations is highly dependent upon our ability to influence others, to convince them that our desires are reasonable and that they should go along with them. And so by cultivating charm, we are able to increase our level of influence. But I want to be very, very clear that the type of power I am talking about is not over people. Rather, it is about making good things happen in every interaction with other people. It's about finding the best way to share your point of view and having a positive impact instead of putting others in an uncomfortable position. Because let's be honest, without charm, we are merely manipulating, manipulating, say that word, uh, childhood speech problems, come back to haunt me. We are merely manipulating other people with our pers persuasion skills. So what exactly is this thing called charm? Over and over again, our mid-century mentors tell us that charm is about putting other people at ease and making them feel good about themselves. I'm not talking about fake nice. It's one of my pet peeves. But about finding a genuine connection where people feel valued. I don't know about you, but I know I'd rather hang around people who make me feel good about myself. I know they will encourage me when I need it, and they will have a deep belly laughs with me when I need those even more. But charm is also about being our most authentic selves. By achieving our full potentials, we are able to develop meaningful relationships. And just like I'm always receptive to hearing requests from people who make me feel good about myself, people will be more open to our requests when we have an authentic connection to them. So here are four things to keep in mind when you want to influence others using charm. The first is body language. 
A great place to start in developing conversational magic is to consider our body language when interacting with others. Very often, the first impression we give to others is through the messages our bodies are conveying. Are we giving the other pe- uh, are we are we giving the other person our full attention? Are we standing in a relaxed but attentive manner? Or do we look like we can't wait to leave the conversation? Is your body language open or defensive with your arms crossed in front of you? Be fully present and actually listen to the person you're talking to, not planning on how you're going to respond. Charismatic people are known for making other people feel like they are the only person in the room through their body language and attention. The second area is eye contact and facial expressions. So eye contact is a really big deal for the dominant culture in the United States. A great way to make a connection with someone is to look them in the eyes to indicate that you are listening to them. It doesn't have to be constant. That would be kind of creepy. But just often enough so that they know that you are listening to them and that you're interested in what they are saying. That said, eye contact needs to be in alignment with your facial expression. So like body language, our facial expressions can convey a whole lot more than we intend for them to say. And one of the reasons I will never be able to win a poker game. And also one of the reasons why I used to tell my students that when they ask me a question and I start thinking that I kind of go into resting bitch face when I'm thinking and that I'm not upset with them. I'm thinking about what their question was. So that may be something you tell people also. I'm not mad. This is just, I've got RBF. I once taught at a smallish university and one of the senior administrators had a terrible habit of always looking over the shoulder and around the room when talking to someone at university or social events. It it always felt like he was looking for someone else to talk to, which kind of made conversations pretty, not kind of, it made conversations very awkward. Um, as a result, a lot of people questioned his leadership ability. Um, And I think it was because of his inability to hold eye contact and make faculty and staff feel important to him. And it was a bit sad because in smaller situations, the mister and I had this administrator and his wife over to our our home, invited them to our home several times. In smaller situations, his passion and compassion really showed. But his body language, lack of eye contact and facial expressions in larger situations really impeded his leadership abilities. Number three, communication skills. And I hear this a lot. One of the most common mistakes people make is to focus on themselves when interacting with others. They worry about what they're going to say, how they're going to keep the conversation going. So the most important skill that charismatic and charming people have developed is the art of asking open-ended questions. They find different ways that people are able to talk about themselves and what is important to them. An added bonus is that when you find out things that are important to the people, you're able to use your newfound superpower as a charming person to make a difference in their lives in a positive way with your charismatic leadership. You're able to help people make connections with each other. You're able to make things happen for them. And not so that they'll praise you, but just because it's the right thing to do and it's part of being a charming person. Which leads to number four, be a positive influence. In recent years, it seems like negativity is permeating all areas of our lives. You know, being on lockdown from a pandemic doesn't help. The news, social media, conversations around the water cooler, everywhere it seems, all we hear is how miserable and scary life is. While we need to stay pragmatic about the realities of the world around us, we can also choose positivity and being optimistic. We can choose happiness over misery when we are interacting with other people. It's just as easy to talk about the good stuff that's happening as it is to go down that negative rabbit hole. Marjorie Wilson, our mid-century mentor, warns us not to dismiss charm as being superficial. And I agree with her. I've heard from people who argue that charm is just a way to manipulate people. 
But I believe that true charm is being interested truly in, and authentically interested in other people. It is seeing things from other people's perspectives in order to find common ground. Uh, I hate this saying, but it's looking for the win-win or I, my preference, the with and instead of the either or or trying to dominate or black and white kind of thinking. By being your authentic self and being truly interested in other people, they're more willing to listen to what you have to say. Unfortunately, it may seem like bullies are always getting their way. The truth is that their influence is short-lived. They get labeled as someone to be avoided. Even if they have a genuine re request, you know, the knee-jerk reaction will be to put barriers up as a way to protect ourselves from their hostile energy. And we feel that energy. I talked about it in my Aura of Magnificence. We we share energy. We have energy around us. Their bullying pre prevents them from earning respect. At a different university where I was an administrator, there was a professor who attended many workshops offered by my office on various teaching strategies. When I first met her, I thought she was nice and I didn't understand why other professors were, were avoiding her. Unfortunately, I quickly discovered that she was fake nice. Underneath this image of having it all together was really a mean-spirited person who constantly stabbed other people in the back. Word had gotten around about her efforts to manipulate others. So basically, she destroyed her own credibility with her bullying behaviors. She had no influence, absolutely no influence on anybody. So in closing... By cultivating charm, we can establish authentic relationships with the people we encounter in our daily lives. Whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, and I'm a raging introvert, you, you can still establish those authentic relationships. Uh, as we go about our day, we can be on the lookout for ways to put others at ease or simply make their day a little bit better. So, do you have an example of a person whose charm enabled her to have a great deal of authentic influence? Share your example in the comments below. Let's have a love fest. Let's be positive. Let's have a love fest and honor these women and learn by their from their examples. So that's it for this journey. Until next time, have a fabulous Technicolor day. Bye now.